Hello, family, and welcome to another episode of Role Model Makers Experts Cafe. I'm your host, Dr. L, the Parent Whisperer. And today with me, I have an amazing lady. She's been part of our community. I believe she even spoke on one of our summits. So uh, I love the topic that she has. It's actually very relevant. So parents and parent entrepreneurs, please stop multitasking. Listen up. It is my pleasure to introduce to you guys uh, Miss Sandy Go. Uh, Sandy has uh, basically taken time out of her busy schedule to be here. Thank you, Sandy, for doing that. Uh, can you tell our audience members a little bit more about uh, what we're about to hear and why that topic is important uh, for families? Well, um, I, I, the, the, how everyone sees that, the, the world has been changing. It's really crazy. But I, I really felt the importance to come back to personal identity. And that's not just for our children, but also for the parents, because you have to be strong leaders and help equip the kids to be strong leaders. And um, so that's, you know, where it all comes back to, even in personal to business, it comes to to you. <laughs> uh, and of course, speaking of leadership, parents are the first role models and leaders for their kids. So what better place to showcase this for, for your children and also in your work as well and see the results of it. But Sandy, how did you get involved yourself uh, with, with this topic? Uh, well, being a, a parent, um, and I've always been an advocate for children. Even when I was a teenager, I, you know, helped um, with advocates for youth and uh, in college. And, you know, I studied the developmental psychology and, um, yeah, and then you just, life happens and you have a family. Um, I especially, uh, I've learned through hosting international students. Uh, my husband and I have hosted over 80 international students from different countries and cultures. And then you start to see a pattern. You start to see the differentiations between, you know, um, cultures and, you know, just being human and uh, the variation in personalities and how that comes into play. And also their character and goals. And, um, and what I've noticed is that a lot of us parents think that when they turn 18, they're adults, they're going to college, yay, you know, I've done my job. But what I've realized, what we see receiving these um, uh, young people into our home is that just that's just the beginning of them finding their identity. And so that's where I see such an importance for parents to uh, provide all those you know, really establish a foundation of self-worth and esteem and their values when they're young, because that is the roots that, that they're going to hold on to when they go on into uh, adulthood and career and life. <laughs> well said. And, and the fact that you have seen this across cultures and across the different nationalities kind of tells the universal universality of what we are about to talk about. Uh, so let's let's dive a little bit deeper into this because when we talk about leadership and uh, role modeling and those type of things, where do you begin? Where does that conversation begin with the kids? And you mentioned it. Where does it begin within you? Like what has to happen? What are some of the indicators that hey, perhaps this is a topic that you need to focus on and address? Hmm. Well, personally, my my faith becomes it begins in God and my relationship with him and uh, the values and promises that, you know, I, I feel that I, I have from him. So it really establishes the um, confidence that we don't need to compare with anyone else uh, because we are each individually designed and made and we all each are given a wired differently. We, we have our own personality DNA, just like our physical DNA. And it uh, is only makes sense for us to get to know who we are um, before we start pointing the finger or looking at other people. And so um, I, I found the uh, tool, the, the DISC model of human behavior as a great tool to accelerate that process of individuals to identify their strengths and understand, start beginning to understand other people. And then you understand how your um, perception of others and, you know, vice versa 
it's basically building relationships by understanding each other. Um, and I think that would alleviate a lot of frustrations and and feelings getting hurt because a lot of times we don't mean to hurt other people's feelings. We're just, um, you know, acting and reacting. But anyway, so uh, that's that's basically what what I would recommend. <laughs> it's first, you know, getting grounded and um, reaching out to others and really making an intentional effort to build relationships and uh, work with each other, identifying each other's strengths. Uh, and that's where collaborations come in. And I, I encourage that in, in families and in business because I see the family mm -hmm. as yeah, so you mentioned a couple of really key points here, and we're going to definitely dive deeper into them um, regarding collaboration, connecting, communication, really, really important stuff. Um, and I can foresee that a person who is looking into this topic, uh, they naturally need to change certain things about themselves to kind of, because things don't just happen by accident, you know, like you end up in a situation, you see the conflict, you see the challenges and then you're like, I got to do something about this, but doing something about this requires you to change. So, so what are the challenges that people have to overcome uh, so that they can actually start moving in the right direction? Because that <laughs> is often that's more yeah. difficult than just the challenge itself. <laughs> right. Yeah. So um, identifying, you know, as far as for this model, it makes it really easy. That's why I like this model. It's uh, divides into like four basic different uh, personality stereotypical love, but we're a mixture of all of it because we are each uniquely made. <laughs> but going with that, with the it's D I S C. Each letter corresponds to a personality stereotype or type and or strength. Um, the D's are dominant. They're direct. They like quick answers. They don't want a lot of detail. Um, you've got the eyes that are uh, very um, interactive. They uh, love relationship. They're people oriented. And you've got the S's who are more calm and stable and the peacemakers. <laughs> um, they don't like conflict. And then you have the C personality types that are more conscientious, detail oriented, tend to be extremely smart because they want all the answers and doing it right. So if you see the, the span of personality styles, you can understand when they're talking to each other and having interaction, they may misunderstand each other's behavior or tone. And um, so, you know, like the I mentioned, the Ds want something really quick. Let's say, um, and they want results. So when we're talking about children, a lot of times the Ds are the ones that may be the ones that cause trouble in the classrooms or in the family because they're they they see things they are very quick and they want results and how they get those results would vary and so that's where parent training would help direct them and give them appropriate ways of of asserting that uh, you've got the eyes that love fun you know they they don't want all the details they don't want to know you know they they just want to be with other people and to communicate and to interact, that's that feeds them. <laughs> so if you lock them up and put them, you know, isolate them in any way, that 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 affects them because they don't like that. Whereas if you had a C personality, I, more isolated or, you know, put into a, a study room or something, for them, they love it. You know, they love that quiet, they love that ability to concentrate on what they're doing and to finish the job. They, they really want to finish it completely. <laughs> um, then you bring in the, the S's, they're very easygoing. So they're the ones that, um, and keeping in mind for parenting, they're the ones that are the easy children. But what they need to be aware of is that they're the ones that are people pleasers. They don't like confrontation. They don't like conflict. Those are the ones that might be lured into doing something that they don't really feel comfortable with or committing to something um, that is overwhelming for them, but they just didn't want to say no. And so just having a better understanding of how each 
individual is, is wired, what they prefer, um, what their needs are with that personality type, it, it helps us so that when we're communicating with them, we can keep that in mind with our approach, with our tone, with our pace. You talk to a D, you need to speed up your pace <laughs> and get to the point. You have an I, you have to throw in some, you know, fun things and make it a little lighter. You have S's, you have to reassure them that um, it's safe. You know, just give them so, some more information that makes them feel like it's not risky or whatever. And the C's, um, they want details. So you might have to be a little patient with them asking a lot of why questions, you know, why? They want to know why. <laughs> so um, I hope just briefly this just you know, makes you more aware, you know. Always yeah, tells very you. helpful. <laughs> and and I do want to clarify for our audience members, uh, the profiling that you're talking about, uh, first of all, everybody has a little bit of each of these categories. Yeah. And secondly, there is no good category or bad category. Each of them have their pros and cons. And understanding and being aware of who you are and who you're talking to enables what Sandy's talking about with communication and being able to get your point across and being able to be more collaborative and productive in your collaborations, basically. So really cool. And this is beautiful because, uh, you know, oftentimes as parents, we might have trouble connecting with our kids. That's something that, you know, a lot of times is a big complaint that we hear that's like, like I can't connect with my kid or my kid feels disconnected or distant from me. Uh, and it's, it's because your kids are their own entity and they have their own personality and they communicate in their own way. And for us to connect, we need to have that understanding about ourselves and for them. So uh, really, really important stuff. Uh, and this can apply to your relationship, exactly. your work. I can see all kinds of possibilities there. I do have a question for you because I know that you're, you yeah, you're a specialist in this. So teens are a big challenge. And so that's where I have um, really want to help parents with that because they're like, who is this child that um, I don't recognize them anymore? <laughs> but so. I've noticed when I've had, um, they've taken the disc assessments and I've had their one-on-ones and the part of the report of the disc has two graphs. One of them is their basic um report that shows their natural wiring, the, you know, their personality that God gave them at birth. And then the other is environmental. I noticed that in the teenage, especially with the boys, there was a big difference in these, these graphs. And then I seen with the adults, there's a little bit less difference. I, okay. I was thinking this is a transitional point where they're trans transitioning from childhood to adulthood. And mm -hmm. they're trying to understand who they are. Their parents are trying to understand who they are. Could this be a reflection of that transformation process? And you now they may be lashing out and, and all, but they, they might not, you know, it's not to, for parents to take personally is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. That's a really good question. So I'm going to get a little geeky here for our audience members. <laughs> so there are two significant points in our young life uh, where our brain kind of goes through this pruning process. So if you look back at your childhood, there is two times that you don't remember or you don't have good memory of. One is your early childhood that you have like no recollection of, right? Because memory hasn't, people say memory hasn't fully developed. The other one is your childhood in general. Like as we get older and we look back, there's less and less of it that we remember and we don't remember the details, just the feelings and the big generalities of what we used to do or how our family used to be, right? Um, so these two areas are because our brain goes through this pruning process. It literally rewires and restructures itself. One of them is at the end of your, uh, you know, like at the beginning of your toddler years, basically. You're not a baby anymore, and now you're becoming your own entity, and you're learning to say no, and you're learning consequences and all of those social rules, right? So you start, like, you've there's one period of pruning. So when you mentioned that God didn't give them personalities, 
this is when you start re- looking at your kids and you're like, you know, this is a fussy kid or this is a picky kid or this is a kid that, you know, is very cautious, you know, those type of things. Uh, and then there's this other period which happens towards the end of your adolescent years, which is actually very similar to three, four years of age at the same time, meaning that your kids have a lot of abilities at nine and 10 and maybe even 11. And then all of a sudden, they seem, there seems to be a dip in their ability to care for themselves or do the stuff that they were doing with ease at eight and nine years old because they're going through that process. And this is right around the time when you start seeing the, the sexual changes come in. You're going to see basically uh, some of their habits, their preferences, those things change and they become more grown up, right? They put away their toys. They're too cool to play with their toys, different groups of people. Um, so if the parents at this point are not patient with this pruning process, one thing that can happen, especially you mentioned boys, is because boys tend to be like favoring one side of the brain over the other, whereas girls have a larger central connector between the two hemispheres of their brain. So they tend to interchange between the two brain sides much more with ease, basically. Uh, So what happens is the process of pruning can really have a pendulum sw- uh, effect and swing to the side that you know changes the kid's personality. And you would see that, especially much more in a boy where they have these breakouts or they're like, you know what, none of this, I don't want to identify with this. And they go for the opposite end of the spectrum, basically. Um, so, so just mentioning that, letting the uh, parents know that what Sandy's talking about is very relevant. There's neurological facts to it. And also there's environmental facts about how your parenting style can actually contribute to this. If especially you don't allow the personality to fully develop based on the kid's development and more aligned with what your values are, basically. So uh, I always have this advice for the kids, uh, for the parents to allow the uh, adolescents and the young adults to really blossom in their personality sooner rather than later and deal with the mistakes that inevitably are going to happen as a child is learning how to be a young adult because they don't have any experience in doing that. Uh, So it's better for them to get that experience while they're under your roof than when they go off to college, right? So... So, Sandy, uh, let's talk about this a little bit as well for families. Uh, We're talking about kids that are planning to pick a major, going to college, where they're going to go to college, maybe even careers. How does this profile uh, and understanding who they are can be beneficial to them in ending up in the right place uh, Mm -hmm. with the young adult life and the trajectory of where they're putting their focus and efforts in? Yeah, for I can give an example. Um, I had quite a few of our international students go ahead and take the the assessments and living with them and and knowing them. And (laughs) it's uh, been really enriching. But uh, I had this uh, one Japanese student. And so from their culture, you know, it's more reserved. And then you come into the American culture and there's a lot of different challenges. So she came in with a, a mindset that she was going to be majoring in, you know, um, a certain uh, focus. Um, they put tons of money and commitment towards that. Uh, and then after the assessment, it looked like she, it wasn't really quite in alignment with her personality. It's like she mm-hmm. can do it but it would be a higher stress on her because she's stretching herself to fit into maybe um, something that's not coming as natural to her. So Mm -hmm. this is where uh, just a, I always say the 15 minutes that it takes to take it could save you years of trying to figure it out (laughs) and and, uh, a lot of uh, effort and and investments. so yeah, so that's that's how that works. And others uh, that already have been in their careers and businesses, they've taken the assessments and had a better understanding how they can be better in their as a CEO or manager, a team player, um, team leader. It it really helps to have a a deeper understanding of other people, and um, it's you know it's just such a better environment. 
Uh, Sandy, you mentioned something that made me realize. Uh, within our community, we also do have a lot of moms or actually parents, not necessarily just moms, but that they leave the workforce to take care of the kids and either at the end of the child's young life or at the end of the child's kind of leaving home and they becoming empty nesters, they want to go back to career and to opportunities. And of course, a lot of times they find out that many times what they were trained for and the job market has moved on. Uh, and they really start thinking about, okay, well, if it's a do-over, where do I begin? So I assume that what you're describing is very relevant in making sure that now that you're doing the do-over, to do it in the best way so that you can land where you're going to be happiest based on your personality and what you want to achieve with your the rest of your career life, basically. Is that correct? Yes, yes. <clears throat> and that's why our, our coaching always includes we encourage them to first take the personality assessment um, because a lot of them never even taken that. They never took the time, especially when you're parenting, you're focusing and pouring everything out into your, your family that you haven't really self-examined it. And it is a transition. Um, and you go through seasons of life where you go through these different identity transitions. Um, but for especially, and I do do one-on-one -on -one strategy calls with moms because it's important for them to know who they are and their strengths. But let's say they're transitioning into the business world. This helps them so that it breaks that expectation or, or pressure that they feel, oh, I've this person's successful. I want to be just like them. And I, and then they try to mimic getting there the, the way that's shown. But it it may not be the right way for them. <laughs> and there's a huge work with different personalities. So you want to attract the clients that are your ideal clients, not just everybody. So it's really important for you to narrow it down to who do you really want to serve and how do you want to serve? What makes you feel comfortable in that? Um, and then also it helps to know where maybe your strengths aren't. So then you can identify what kind of help you need or what kind of coaching you need to strengthen that area that you might, you know, not be so strong in. Like me personally, um, I was in, I was very shy growing up and an introvert. By the time I was in high school, at least, you know, I broke out enough to be a varsity cheerleader. <laughs> and then just through, um, I don't know, just feeling, I, I have a high eye, which means I like relationships. I like bringing people together. And so, that kind of motivates me and, you know, having, I, you know, got the personal relationship with Jesus that really got me going. <laughs> but um, yeah, so there's, there's. Andy, I know that our time is short, so I want to okay. make sure that um, um, people have a way of connecting with you. What is a good way for people to contact you and reach out to you and see what you do? I think uh, probably my email, sandy at memorableconnections.com. If they want to see more about the DISC assessments and how that can work and um, help them to, I do a family one, which is every member of the family takes the assessment. And then I have a confidential meeting with the parents and they can get information on that for disc-go.com, disc dash go my name g-o-e dot com wonderful um so audience members i do want to invite you to make sure that you connect with sandy this is an amazing tool uh learn more about it uh figure more about yourself or if you already know let us know in the comments whether you are a d or an i s or a c uh and we would uh love your comments and feedbacks on this as well uh role model the behavior for your kids let them know that it is okay to reach out and ask for help that the world is not this scary place that they're genuinely good people People that want to make the world a better place uh, and if you haven't already done so connect to our channel by clicking subscribe uh, so that people like Sandy and other experts that come here sharing their expertise and gifts with you um, that's um, you get notified of those uh, Sandy has generously provided a lot more resources I will go ahead and put those details in the description box so do make sure you check those out and before we finish Sandy any final words for our audience members and I just want to encourage all the parents yeah, you know, <laughs> uh, keep going. You're doing great. 
and uh, take time to really value yourself. <laughs> Sounds good. Awesome. All right, guys. Uh, until next time. Cheers. Thanks.